increasingly more citizens uh, in Europe and US think the social contract is broken. We see it when Trump and, and Brexit are voted for, and we also see it when we look at those pictures with environment uh, being deteriorated and the, um, the wealth and income inequality increasing to historic high levels. For the first time in many generations, people are less optimistic than their parents about their, their futures. And we might blame corporations or the wealthiest people about this, but I think we have to look at ourselves and how do we govern um, our, our society and be more bold in taking action. My story, and why do I care about this briefly? Because I want to talk to you about an idea rather than uh, my bio. Um, but I grew up here in Istanbul, and when I was 16, I went to US for a year, and um, I, I was studying hard in a privileged high school here, and then um, there all of a sudden I saw that people weren't studying as much and they were really enjoying, and um, the, the parents there, they had also a pretty good lifestyle and it was fun. And then I came back and I realized that life here is a lot more uh, demanding. You have to prepare for university examinations and so on. So I thought, okay, why is this so, so different? How can we do this better? So I picked engineering degree, I went to Bozici. Um, I thought engineers fix world's problems, but I found out soon after that engineers are trying to um, maximize shareholder value and not necessarily working on what's most important for society. I thought, um, you know, existing technology often is enough if we have the right policies uh, in place. So uh, I worked with McKinsey for a couple of years, consulting company, and uh, I got introduced to capitalism. That was pretty useful. Um, and thereafter, I took a policy degree uh, at Berkeley, where they do a lot of fantastic um, policy studies and insights. However, to my disappointment, I found out that a lot of those insights are also not used in defining policy in the US. Um, the way we make politics is more about who do we like to listen to, and politicians have to get re-elected, they have to say what people, most people like to hear, and media would like to cover what is uh, more interesting to cover. So I decided to go yet another route, which is um, startups and technology, and try to leverage technology to do social good. The first thing I did was a crowdfunding platform that was in, in Denmark, that took me to Denmark. So I live in Copenhagen now for 11 years. And after that, I decided to start a direct democracy platform, um, which was called We Decide. After three years of um, making that work, which was very ambitious, um, I, uh, I decided to change course. I worked with social finance uh, for a couple of years, and then I started this company. Uh, you see me with one of our bicycles. It's called Donkey Republic, with about 5,000 bikes. It's shared bicycles um, across Europe in about 50 uh, destinations. So, let's get to the idea. Um, I'd like to have you think about our public goals as a platform. What does that mean? That means that could we define what these goals are, such as education, healthcare, free time, and so on, and put a price tag on them? We should be able to do price tag on these goals because we have giant public budgets and if we are spending them on things we value, we must be also be measuring them. We're often not, but let's assume that we could. If we do that and one, when we do that, we can actually open markets to serve these public goals. That's the idea I'd like to pitch you. Good education, that's a public good as we give it to our kids. That has a value. Um, what is that price tag? What is the value of public space? We all enjoy when there's more public space. What is the value of one additional hour per week? If we had to spend less time in commuting or with bureaucracy, what value do we get out of that? What about a justice system that actually works? You can add other examples, consumer protection, regulated markets, more trees, less air pollution and so on. So I want to talk about public goals those goals that we have on the left-hand side, and um, all these services and goods that we are using, they actually have effects on these public goals. If you drive a car, you're contributing to air pollution. If you drive a bicycle, you're not doing that. Um, but we don't have this feedback loop of rewards and penalties really uh, coming back to, to regulate these, these uh, services and goods. And I think we could do 
a lot better than, than what we're doing and internalize what economists call these externalities. So briefly again, I used to bike here in Istanbul as a sport. That was, um, that was fun um, back in 80s and 90s. And then in Copenhagen now, it's my commute. It's uh, 25 minutes to work on a bicycle every day. Um, in Istanbul, my commute was one and a half hours. That was a bus, ferry, and another tram ride. Uh, and, and my mom actually worked uh, for 40 years where she had to, and a lot of you probably are still doing, one and a half hours each way to work. So bicycles are actually one of the great things that a city can invest into because they have a lot of social benefits and they can be quite fast, especially if they are combined with a uh, rail network. So this is actually documented effects of bicycles, safe streets, healthy people, uh, quick mobility, low noise levels, low air pollution. But we don't promote bicycles. We don't pay cyclists for cycling. We don't subsidize bicycles. We don't subsidize bike sharing companies like mine. So we don't have as many bicycle or cyclists as, as we should have as a society. And that applies to a lot of other things. So why does that happen? This is Los Angeles in 1907. They had a bike highway, one of the best cycling infrastructure in the world back at that time. They also had a good tram infrastructure, actually. And this is Los Angeles today. We assume that technology will just do things better for us. But technology doesn't just do that. You have to define what you want from technology. This is Copenhagen. There's a lot of high-tech stuff in Copenhagen. Um, while in Los Angeles, 80% of trips happen in a car, in Copenhagen, it's about 20%. And 50% of all trips happen on bicycles. Los Angeles have high obesity levels and high violence, and Copenhagen has the happiest city in the world with low obesity and, and, and violence. Now we're talking about autonomous or driverless vehicles. And we could have streets looking like this, where people are sort of enjoying it. Or it could look a bit more like this, where you might think um, it's convenient or this is not the picture you want. The problem is that when politicians debate to make policy, we don't really look at those outcomes. We don't compare how Los Angeles was doing with violence and crime and link that to, to vehicles and decide to change that. We look at who we identify with and if we, can, you know, if we want to believe that person. So my point is, can we act a bit more like a technology company as a society and gather a lot more data in a transparent way, link those indicators of health, employment, happiness, free time, everything that we care about collectively, and link it to services and goods. Make it into a platform where people can contribute with new services and get rewarded for it. And if you're negating our social goals, then you should be penalized for it. If we did that, I think there will be a whole new breed of companies popping up, like our bike share company. Maybe some company will set up some public parks or some new elderly services that we haven't heard of. Now, you might say, oh, this looks like some corporate social responsibility. But it's a completely different thing, because these are now business models that will be funded by public income in a continuous way. These are not marketing gigs. And I think another thing we're lacking in government is talent. We need to figure out how to attract the people who work for Google or for some marketing company to actually use their you know, skilled brains to do public good. Maybe we could get them to design regulation or to, bid, to bet on or bid on regulations uh, futures, how, what public outcomes those could create. Now, these might sound like, for some of you, some Black Mirror episode or something really negative, but, but I think we have to sort of take a, take a look at what, what is possible. So why does a guy like me come up with these crazy ideas? Um, it's a combination of things, but very briefly on that also. Um, CO2 emissions, we set up this cap and trade system about a couple decades ago. And I thought that was fascinating. If you're a company reducing your emissions, you could get rewarded, whereas if you don't do that, then you'll get penalized. All the stuff I talked about is put in practice in that one dimension with CO2 emissions. Then I briefly worked with social impact bonds, and that's been also quite inspiring. Social impact bonds is when government says, hey, here I have a problem I don't know how to solve. I want to open this problem to markets to solve it on my behalf, and it's for this target group. 
and I will pay you companies a certain amount of money for each improvement that you do. And one of these projects, the first project actually, started a decade ago in the UK, was to reduce re offense of ex prisoners. So companies come up with services to train these people, um, the prisoners, to get a better life when they get out of prison because apparently a lot of them don't have such good opportunities when they get out and often they re offend and, and get back in. So they set aside a budget, 10,000 or X amount per person that actually continues on the margin, increased amount of persons that continues a better life, the companies will receive that money. Another project with homeless people, if they could be uh, put to a home where they would continue their lives, that's a, that's a positive social outcome. Another one with changing people's lifestyle habits and prevention of diabetes. Um, another one with working with youth uh, out of employment or training. That should also, uh, getting them into a better situation is also a, a positive social outcome that we are willing to pay for. Then another source of inspiration is tech companies. I've been working with technology for, for some years now, and there's something subtle. This is the, you probably all know, Facebook's landing page. What you might not notice, though, is that Facebook is running hundreds of tests to improve their outcomes. So Facebook is a platform. We are all contributing with our content to that platform. And they are running these tests to improve their outcomes. The outcomes are how many seconds that you spend on the platform, if you're going to click on their sponsored content, if you're going to share uh, more content or create events, and so on and so forth. The tests they are running are changes in their user interface, or it might be that they change their um, algorithms of what you're going to be shown, um, or the notifications patterns. And those things they track, how, how are they changing the outcomes that they care about? And this is something that a lot of technology companies do. It's called a build, measure, learn loop. This loop, you come up with ideas, you put them into a product, you have to have data to be, actually, to be able to measure the impact of what you've just done, and then with that data you can learn, you can understand if that created the outcome that you wanted or not. The faster you go through this loop, the faster you learn. And what makes Facebook and the biggest technology companies grow so fast, now they are the top 10 um, uh, valued companies in the world, is because they go through this loop really fast. And we are very slow doing that in public space. So Facebook, Google, and Apple are platforms born digital. But there's another breed of companies, like Tesla, Amazon, and Airbnb. And they brought previously offline industries into online. Driving, retail business, and um, hospitality, these used to be offline businesses. But now that you can track how each change in the policies um, are, are changing people's behavior on these platforms. I think we could take our very complex social welfare system as a platform, run tests, collect data, and do what these tech companies do, attract top talent to improve a much better uh, situation. You can't talk about improving society with basically not touching on corporations' role, it seems. Here's Apple, very respectful company. Um, I use Apple products with joy. And they are uh, blamed with, um, amongst other things, tax evasion and um, getting people to work in uh, really bad conditions. But we're missing a point if you blame Apple and companies for such things. They're not doing something illegal. And if we expect companies to regulate themselves, we are too naive. They are there to maximize shareholder value. So Uber is not going to go and, and stand for labor rights or taxi cabs uh, jobs. We have to do that as society. We live at a time where money is less and less associated with social value. It seems if someone is rich, we are a bit you know, uh, wary. What did you do to make all that money? You know, who did you screw up with? Um, and, and we need healthy regulations and regulations that represent public interest to make money represent social value again. I'm going to end my talk with saying um, this is controversial stuff. Uh, on one hand, I'm saying um, open up all public goods to, to markets. 
those who work with government will probably say, no, this is crazy. And, and all the free marketers will say, regulate everything. That's also crazy. But we have to be brave. We're living in a time where technology is moving fast. The average citizen is not doing better. And we have to be bolder, uh, braver in getting out there and, and challenging how we do things. Thanks.